any reviews and recommendations I do I mentioned this in the introduction but I'm gonna say it again right now it's gonna contain spoilers so if you're a Valiant fan or if you're someone who really doesn't like spoilers and you really want to sit down and read Eternal Warrior 1 to 8 I'd come back to this video I wouldn't recommend you watching this video right now because I can't help but give spoilers okay now what we're going to do is take a look at Eternal Warrior number one to eight. Um, what I just did recently was a couple of weeks ago, um, I, I sat down and I read Eternal Warrior one to eight. I think I read one and two first, the first day, and then got totally hooked and read number uh, three to eight uh, the following day. And um, I decided to start off with this book uh, for two, two reasons mainly if you've been watching my comic book videos you know that um, I'm an old-school Valiant fan I you know I really like the books uh, unity pre unity and a little bit post unity in the early 1990s and um, um, after finding out that Valiant did a relaunch is going back and buying some of the relaunch issues and reading those and I got into that after um, reading Rai, finding out that Rai was coming out, the relaunch of Rai, which was really excited about because uh, I really liked that character, I really liked the universe presented there, right? So I read, uh, you know, the first book I read of the Valiant, Valiant relaunch was Rai and loved it and then I started buying some of the other books, I believe I bought Quantum and Woody Next and Laugh My Ass Off, uh, bought Harbinger, Harbinger Wars, uh, Bloodshot, the crossover, the whole thing there uh, including number one all the way up for Harbinger and Bloodshot read those and got just got blown away and what I ended up doing is dropping everything else and almost everything else and going with almost exclusively Valiant so the reason I decided to start off with this is because Valiant comics is one of the things I've been reading a lot right that's my main reading of comic books for the last few months the second reason I started decided to go with this book with this set is because uh, I've been going online and talking to some Valiant fans, different forums and stuff. And every now and then, if you run into a Valiant fan at a comic book store, you end up chatting if you find out they're Valiant fans, uh, just to see what they think of the universe, right? Because it's brilliant. It's like catching people by surprise. It caught me by surprise, right? And um, you sort of find out what they've been reading and what they've read. and. Uh, because people there wasn't too many people that jumped on right away there's a lot of people that are trying to read back issues and catch up right and um, eternal warrior is one that i hadn't read i'm doing major catch-up play right and i found out after talking with people this uh, the people who were reading the valiant relaunch from the beginning or early on is a lot of people didn't appreciate eternal warrior i guess as much as i did um and I can understand why because it's eight issues and the first four issues uh, well, they they don't directly link to five to eight right so there's a huge gap it goes from one end of the spectrum to the other end of the spectrum and the cliffhanger for number four was so amazing that uh, you wanted to see what happened next right and um, it is it is a little bit different than some of the other stuff that I've read but uh, I really loved it okay so that's the other reason I wanted to do this is because I know there is uh, the Val some of the Valiant fans I've talked to uh, very few of them not many have read Eternal Warrior and it's it's an amazing read I, I really loved it and I you know going back to the 1990s uh, Eternal Warrior I liked it I liked Eternal Warrior uh, he made his first appearance in uh, Solar Man of the Atom number 10 and the first full appearance in man of the atom solar number 11 right and i was reading solar at the time and you know solar one to ten alpha and omega storyline uh, written by jim shooter barry art by barry windsor smith and bob layton uh, if you haven't read those 10 issues uh you should definitely read those 10 issues they're one of the greatest stories ever told right as for the storyline what is this uh, relaunch all about now in the first issue we get introduced to Gilad and the timeline for the first issue or for the first four issue is as follows it shows Gilad 
in the present right in the present day valiant universe which is at the present for us as well right uh, set in the present setting and it's in that period where Gilad the eternal warrior has chosen to live an isolationist lifestyle right he's disconnected himself from humanity and there is uh, no geomancer he's not uh, being the protector of the geomancer he's given up that uh, mindset that or that philosophy that was born into right um, so he's a little pissed basically so that's how the storyline sort of starts and it does flashbacks to uh, sort of the medieval period where it was around where humanity was tribal based right and the story from that period is set in um, a time where Gilad's eternal warriors tribe is about to go to war with another tribe and their brutal savages or whatnot and uh you know it's it's a battle to the death really to try to annihilate each other and gilad has a daughter and a son okay and that sort of starts off issue number one of the relaunch of eternal warrior and halfway by halfway through this i was blown away okay because it does things which is like wow very heavy and it gives uh, the character development and this is brilliant and the relationships the way they build up the relationships are amazing right and one thing with the eternal warrior is uh, is since he's been around for uh, well for a very long time he's uh, uh, he's he goes through periods there's a lot of emotion involved between him showing him from this period at the present going to the medieval period and it does flashbacks to other periods as well okay and that's sort of what happens in the first four issues of uh, of the series right that is issue number one okay nice cover right and issue number two issue number three and issue number four sort of follow the storyline right building on Ilat's character uh, or sorry Gilad's character the eternal warrior's character right and sort of going between the present where uh, you know other people enter his life and it gives us a sort of a feel for why he's in the headspace that he's in at the present which is sort of isolationist point of view right where um, he really uh, doesn't want to have anything to do with humanity right he's just living off the land and not interacting with any human beings or interacting as, as minimally as possible right and the cliffhanger for this for issue number four is absolutely magnificent when I finished issue number four I got hooked halfway through issue number one because I didn't really connect with the eternal warrior from the 1990s that that much I love the storylines but I found them to be I really didn't get attached to him I couldn't get I couldn't feel what he was feeling halfway through issue number one of this relaunch you got hooked I got hooked anyway and it got better and better as I read okay issue number four leaves you with a cliffhanger that you're dying to read issue number five which should be the continuation of issue number four unfortunately it's not right for those of you who are dying to read what happens after issue number four we don't know okay i told you there's spoilers in this review issue number five to eight pick up in 4001 a.d which is the time period of uh, where rye is around right rye exists so the first four are occurring in whatever thousand bc and the next four issues of this eight issue set occur in 4000 a.d so there's a six thousand year or whatever gap between the two periods and that's one thing um, that i talked to some valiant people uh, some people some valiant um i did i was able to hook up with a couple of people talk with a couple of people that had read the eternal warrior and they really didn't like that aspect of it right for me initially i hated it i read eternal warrior number four 
and I really wanted to read what happens next and we're left hanging right I guess that's why this is called the cliffhanger right and just to give you a feel of how amazing uh, the build-up to this is the first four issues and the way it, it leaves you there is this is the same type of cliffhanger uh, that you would find in the walking dead right the walking dead uh, comic books the, the series is fantastic if, if you're watching the series right um, it's it doesn't do everything the comic book does um, which initially threw people off but I think it does a brilliant job of telling a certain perspective and it's fantastic right but the comic books are in a realm of their own they're absolutely amazing and the, the one thing about the walking dead comic books are the, are the cliffhangers when you get to the end of one issue you can't wait to read the next issue okay and that's the way uh, Eter eternal warrior number four was for me right when i picked up eternal warrior number five i was really disappointed to find that it didn't continue until i started reading and eternal warrior number five by number six i was totally immersed into this storyline and it is absolutely brilliant it's uh sort of post-apocalyptic right but not cyberpunk post-apocalyptic it's sort of um post that has happened a long time and nature has grown back and humanity has sort of gone back to a sort of a tribal period and there's different tribes around right the first four issues and then next four issues the last uh, four issues issue five to eight vary so much in tone and pace that i think that's one of the reasons that eternal warrior is not highly ranked among people who have been following uh, the relaunch of the valiant universe for me i i really loved the pace and i really loved what they did the first four issues of this are sort of chaotic and they show show uh gilad the eternal warrior in, in chaos with himself right uh it has him in the present and it shows flashbacks of different periods and it shows us you know all the things he had to do some horrendous things he had to do to protect the geomancer because supposedly it was the will of the earth right so he had to stand by and allow slaughters to occur right he had to walk away from atrocities and that really we get the sense for from issue number one to four how uh, that has played out in his life and how uh, how the bitterness has sunk into him when they show him as an isolationist right because he's had to do some crazy stuff you know he's the immortal immortal, immortal warrior right he's been around at present you know he was i guess he came to be in 3000 bc right right now if present day um, valiant is now that's 2000 so 5000 years just imagine what you would have seen in 5000 years and the first four issues really portray that really well and they show the chaotic nature of gilad right the eternal warrior where he's unstable a little bit right angry the eternal warrior in number five to eight the storyline right where in number one to four the timeline jumps in number five to eight the timeline doesn't jump it stays in 4001 ad right which is absolutely brilliant and it sort of mimics the mood of the character of the eternal warrior during this period right and again it's a period where it's tribal okay and gilad is the head of his tribe the protector of his tribe right and from what i remember I don't remember a geomancer being in this in this last last eight, last eight issues, right? So he's the protector of his tribe, and something happens, and he has to uh, go on a walkabout and retrieve something to help the tribe. I and mean, that's the most I can do without giving spoilers, right? Uh, unfortunately, that and it, it's worth reading, right? But basically. He has to go out on on a walk on a 
an excursion to find a cure for his tribe and what happens is the character they pair up uh, Gilad with is his granddaughter right so he's an older Gilad right he's been around for 6,000 years just imagine what he's seen post-apocalyptic and all the things he's had to do so he's a wiser character and his character is a set in stone he's paired off with his granddaughter which is like 10 years old plus or minus I can't remember if it was 8 or 12 or whatever it is right so a 10 year old brilliant 10 year old uh, inquisitive 10 year old and um, very high energy 10 year old right so you see that in this in these eight issues a Gilad a grandfather's interaction with his granddaughter the grandfather being the wise old man and the eternal warrior being the wisest old man there could be right he's like six thousand seven thousand years old right and him interacting with someone who's lived 10 years and bagai like huge eyed about the world and wanting to know more and more and they send these two off on a little journey on a, on a little treasure hunt basically right and it's a brilliant storytelling it was very well done i really uh got into this completely differently than i got in the first four issues the four, first four issues were super exciting they created the the universe for the for the valiant universe really it's like what's going on with the eternal warrior and who are some of the main players uh main people in this universe and the eternal warrior one to four as far as i, I see it for the valley universe is must reading because they introduce they don't introduce they mention different casts right that are around and or different families and they're the ones uh, who've been growing and controlling certain aspects of how society functions and it left a lot of cliffhangers they're gonna build up a lot i believe on what happens from eternal warrior one to four right eternal warrior five to eight standalone storyline futuristic possibly tie in with Rai because it's around the same period right and it's sort of a lot of different characters come in and uh the interaction between gilad and his uh, granddaughter is amazing and gilad is immortal right and his granddaughter is 10 years old and he knows the, w the way he sees it when he's seeing a lot of the stuff He's very calm and quiet and it, it builds up such a strong bond between them that you can sense how much Gilad loves his granddaughter. It's absolutely amazing. It's one of the best storytellings, uh, relationship buildings that I've seen in comic books between uh, an older character and a younger character. Very well done, very well done indeed. And in Eternal Warrior number eight, right? Uh, it uh it is a cliffhanger it has a cliffhanger and it's a brilliant one at that where um uh, it's very uh, it's very quiet cliffhanger you're not anxious about it you're more more uh, inquisitive about it thinking about it nostalgic about it it's in a weird way uh where uh the granddaughter uh this world that gilad is on is post uh, gilad is in is post-apocalyptic but it's not cyberpunk right it's more nature oriented tribal so there's very minimal technology and towards the end of this uh through their excursion uh gilad's granddaughter uh finds technology and uh starts working with it playing with it and wants to know more and from the mindset of what uh, the dialogue that uh, the eternal warrior has we realize that technology was really one of the main causes of the downfall of humanity right so he's really you know apprehensive about his granddaughter uh, playing with technology but he's a wise grandfather right he's a wise human being he's a wise teacher so he allows that see to grow right he doesn't stop it he just posts questions to the granddaughter right like the granddaughter asks gilad to do certain things which children would do without thinking right but 
grown-ups would not right like kids if you watch kids and i i heard this uh, from an episode of uh, uh, cowboy bebop of all places right a brilliant animation series if you ever want to immerse yourself in animation cowboy bebop is it right and samurai shampoo and all that stuff right but in an episode of Cowboy bebop um, one of the characters turns around and says there's nothing as brutal as a child right no human is brutal as a child and 100 percent correct you see children grabbing insects i used to do unfortunately where they would tear them apart just to see what would happen and in the eternal warrior five to eight you, there are multiple times where the granddaughter wants gilad to do something because she knows he's very powerful and by doing that it would mean gilad would have to kill a lot of people and he doesn't turn around and say no that's bad right because what he's gone through what we see in eternal warrior one to four really is embedded in the next four issues right so gilad turns to her and says explains that if he needs to do this that means that many people have to die and if he doesn't do this maybe this many people have to it's amazing mathematics logic right so he ex says that to the daughter and says if you still want me to it's your choice i will do either this or this and you know when you're reading this that it, if you have no idea what the daughter is about to say right because of what happened in eternal warrior one to four right because eternal one to four is more brutal and you get the sense that gilad would do either one irrelevant of what the granddaughter would want uh, uh, irrelevant of the consequences if he thought which one was the right choice or the wrong choice because he wants the granddaughter to make the decisions to make the choices and learn from those choices or pay for those consequences right and it's a brilliant read the cliffhanger is more uh, a breath right uh, the cliffhanger at the end of issue number four for eternal warrior is more anxious uh, you're dying to read issue number five and i hope they continue the series um, they continue the storyline um, because it's i believe it could be and it is to me right now is one of the strongest characters uh, in the valiant universe not necessarily in the crossover books in unity i've read unity i'm reading unity i haven't read all of it i'm reading unity and i read the valiant um and this eternal warrior here is uh much darker much more calculating much calmer um uh, well the older one versus the newer one right uh so brilliant read if you want to hop onto the valiant universe and if you're new to valiant you don't know these characters um you shouldn't worry too much okay because all you really need to know for the eternal warrior they explain all the stuff throughout the books through these eight issues so you really don't need to know anything but it's good to know that the eternal warrior lives forever he's a, he's immortal right that's the only thing you really need to know because when valiant did their relaunch they said there are no canon stories from the past there are no stories that are set in stone that you have to know for the universe that exists now everything's off the table right or everything's on the table they can do anything they want okay uh it's a great um uh, place to start if you're new to valiant and if you're old school valiant uh i know a lot of people who are reading valiant they haven't read the eternal warrior because it's not one of the top things people talk about and i've talked to some people who've read it and they're a little uh, they didn't like the jump from four to five and uh, but i really loved it after reading the whole thing and thinking about it and letting it bounce around in my head i was like wow this is things amazing right uh, so no matter what group you be, uh, you belong to uh, you might like this uh, this book uh, especially the character development and the, the interaction and uh, uh, and the different families and the universe that's being created uh, fantastic after this is uh, eternal warrior I believe it's days of steel three issues set that I haven't read yet uh, which I plan on reading and eternal warrior appears in unity and crossovers or whatnot right okay. i hope you liked uh, 
I hope you could pick up these books, uh, fantastic reads, and if you do read them, I hope you enjoy them, all right? Um, and uh, I'll let you know what else I find. Uh, and I'll definitely do more reviews and recommendations of comic books and at some point, uh, comic book related stuff. May they be books, may they be movies, TV shows, music, whatever. Okay. Uh, that's it for now. I guess I'll see you guys in the next video.